Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. It's Sean from Sean K Beauty. Welcome to another episode of the Truth Skincare Series. This one is a lot more relevant than the uh, Truth Skincare Series uh, topics that I've done. And the reason why I didn't roll this out yesterday is because um, I wanted to do a lot more digging and getting facts um, and then bringing it to this community. Now, one of the things that if, you're, if you've been with me for a while, um, you know that I bring science to beauty. If you're new to my channel, my name is Sean. My background is microbiology and biochemistry. I have been working with the FDA for a number of years, uh, curating and formulating product, uh, testing products, that kind of thing um, has been a huge part of my life. And so now I want to get into bringing my community um, to be well-versed and really intelligent about buying product and understanding what that should look like for each individual. So without further ado, let's get right into this uh, video because this is a serious one, friends. We are talking about um, a carcinogen that is found in a number of sunscreens of late and it is causing a lot of frenzy in the community. Now remember, with the True Skin Care series, I am not here to tell you to throw anything away. I am here to give you truth and then you make your best informed decision on that truth. So some of these sunscreens you may not use, but you may know someone that does. So I wanted to bring context to that. We're gonna cover the FDA, since I've been working with them for years and I look at their guidelines and really am well-versed on that. Also, we're gonna talk about um, how this happened and potentially what could be the cause of how it happened. We're gonna look at sunscreens and what they are um, as far as according to the FDA guidelines before putting it in the marketplace. And then we're gonna talk about the controversy of this and the company a little bit that has discovered not only benzene in sunscreens, but in other products that unfortunately we use daily, especially now. So let's get right into this topic because I don't wanna waste your time. Hopefully you all will like, subscribe and share and see me as a value to the community at large. So let's get right into this. All right, so let's talk about the Food Drug Administration, who we know as the FDA. They are the federal agency that oversees the health and human services, and they are a part of the United States of America's federal government, okay? Um, their goal is to make sure that there is safety, effectiveness, and quality in medical devices, medical products, uh, vaccines, drugs, that kind of thing. So where do they uh, put drugs versus cosmetics as far as being approved before they go into the marketplace? Well, it is two separate worlds. They look at drugs as something that alters an individual in a certain way. So they need to be approved before they go in the marketplace. But when it comes to cosmetics, they're a lot slacker, I should say. Um, when it comes to that, they're more trusting with companies to really you know, put out their eyeshadows and lipsticks and whatnot without, you know, really stepping in and doing anything unless there are cases of like, I think it was, who was it that had to have a recall? I think it was Claire's with that recall because there was asbestos in the eyeshadow. So until there are like known issues, that's when they step in when it comes to cosmetics, but they don't approve them before they go in the marketplace. Now, when it comes to sunscreens, where do they fall? They fall under drugs because under the FDA's um, determination of a sunscreen, because manufacturers claim that this is going to protect an individual from the sun, um, it's also going to reduce the risk of cancer um, from the sun and UVA and UVB rays. That's where uh, it needs to really adhere to some strict guidelines and be approved by the FDA before it is put out into the marketplace. Now, in 2019, the FDA had approved um, the only formulation of a sunscreen should have zinc and titanium um, 
oxide in it. However, we've got chemical sunscreens now with your octocrylene, you have a benzone, your octanoxate, and those are very controversial, okay? Um, I'm just going to put that out there. These are some controversial products because some people, you know, are very leery about what this does as far as being endocrine disruptors or, you know, messing around with the reproductive organs, that kind of thing. So I'm just going to be transparent about that. There's a lot of controversy about sunscreens. However, we do have to protect ourselves from the sun. So then let's talk about benzene because this is important. This is the uh, ingredient in question that is raising a lot of concern. And if you don't know what benzene is, this is a really great way to, to know what it is and the seriousness of benzene as to why um, it is causing frenzy in the community. However, you know, I'm not here to bring frenzy to anybody. I'm not a fear-mongering channel. That's not my jam. Um, I just look at the science side of things and bring the knowledge behind that and the understanding to that so it doesn't seem overwhelming to the consumer who probably has no idea what what is. So we're going to look at the molecular structure of benzene, what benzene is, and why are we using benzene anyway. So let's get started. So FYI, I'm going to leave timestamps down below in case you want to skip through this video to certain chapters. So we're going to talk about benzene. Here's the molecular structure of your benzene. Benzene is one that commonly is used by chemical and pharmaceutical uh, you know, companies. Either they're making tires or they're making hand sanitizers. They're using it for plastics, for resins, that kind of thing. You can find traces of it in cigarette smoke, gasoline, like the exhaust from your gasoline, that kind of thing. Um, they also use it to make, you know, your pesticides and your plastics, rubbers, that kind of thing. So it's, it's really been one that has been used quite a bit. Now, there was an issue that happened at a tire company, and I think it was Goodyear, where factory workers were really exposed to a high concentration of benzene by inhalation. So inhaling this, ingesting this, this being absorbed into the bloodstream, um, this is going to be an issue, okay? Um, what ended up happening during the pandemic, friends, is that uh, because benzene is used to make alcohol for your hand sanitizers, when the hand sanitizers were just flying off the shelves during the pandemic, what ended up happening was the FDA stepped in, gave allotment of two parts per mil concentration of uh, benzene to be used with making hand sanitizers. So that was almost like a concession that the FDA made so that more hand sanitizers could be um could be made for consumers. So just letting you all know that. Now, let's get into the dangers of this um, and what it has been linked to. And I'm also gonna talk about the company that actually stepped in and started doing their own testing to discover all these issues that's been going on in products that we've been using a ton lately. So I wanted to clarify something about benzene. It's not used to make all alcohols. It's some alcohols. And the nature of it is that it's a great solvent, okay? A solvent meaning that it dissolves a solute into a solution. So it can be a superficial fluid um, that is a solvent, a gas, or a solid that is a solvent. And remember, I just mentioned benzene is in liquid form at room temperature. It's like a light yellow or it can appear colorless. So what has it been linked to? It has been linked to blood cancers and no, namely leukemia. And that's why this is becoming an issue. The company Valashore is the one that I applaud because they actually are pushing for the FDA to recall all of these sunscreens and lotions. They've tested, I guess, about 300 or so, and 78 of them had high levels of benzene. And they're asking the, the FDA to clarify now, <laughs> what is the standard of parts per mil of benzene that is allotted at this point, right? Because when we're looking at some of these products that they're finding with eight times the two ppm this is causing an issue um and i'm going to name off some of these uh 
brands to you and some of these products because Neutrogena just happens to be one of them. Banana Boat is another one. It's CVS, I think, and, and I'll get into those in a second. But David Light is the CEO of Valashore and he's actually a, a veteran at being a scientist. He's a biotech entrepreneur. Okay, he's been a scientist for more than 10 years. So he takes what he does very seriously, and their mission at Valashore is to ensure that there is proper testing of medications to be deemed safe before giving it to the consumer. The, this is the same company that found uh, NDMA, which is a carcinogen in your Zantac, which is a stomach uh, medicine, and also in metformin, which is a diabetes uh, treatment medication. And that had to be recalled because why is that in there? What a lot of people are saying right now, as far as the science community, as to how benzene can get into these products is that if that company is using, uh, you know, cheap, um, you know, cheap solvents, then you're ending up with the contamination of benzene or they're not doing the proper testing or um, these chemical processes are really being seen through to the end. Now, I will tell you all, you know, I, I like to stay diplomatic when it comes to controversies like this because um, I remember doing something like this way back when my channel began with the Jaclyn Hill lipsticks and the fear mongering that went on. But one of the things that I want you all to know is that the FDA is not sitting in the lab and testing out these products with scientists, okay? When I worked with the FDA, and I'll give you a case in point, there was formulations that the company I worked for made for recreational pools and spas, okay? And there was an issue there because there were high levels of endotoxins found in the pools and spa waters of consumers, bathers that actually bought uh, this product from the company I worked for. So where did I come in? As the lead microbiologist, I had to come in and take all these samples into the lab and test them to figure out what and how this could potentially happen and then work with the analytical chemists to see what was the formulation. So we had to backpedal. Then we had to come in a boardroom with the FDA, with our findings to present everything to them and hit everything, you know, over from scratch. We also had to make concessions to the consumers. Um, it, w it was a lot that went into it, but the FDA was not there in the lab with the scientists that formulated the product. They were not there in the lab with me when I was testing the endotoxin uh, levels. It was us giving them data that had to be in compliance with the FDA's guidelines when it comes to those sort of chemicals that were, that were being used, okay? So I'm just giving you guys idea. Don't think that the FDA is sitting in all of these companies, but with scientists, um, it's not what that is. They have particular standards that they have in place that has to be checked off the list when data is given from these particular manufacturers. So they are expecting manufacturers to do their due diligence with testing out these products and giving correct data. Now, where it gets tricky here, friends, is that CVS is not disclosing their lab. Um, and I, I think the reason why they're not disclosing their lab yet, um, because they're saying that they ensure that, you know, their products are safe and yada, yada, yada. But I, it, the only reason why I can assume that they are not disclosing their lab is because they want to do their internal problem solving first, okay, which makes a lot of sense. Um, and I know the public wants answers, but right now, I think trying to figure out what went wrong is going to be important as opposed to attacking a CVS or, you know, any of these companies right now. Okay, so um, I'm going to list off some of the the brands that you know of. Um, like I said, this Valashore company found in generic and name brand um, products and DMA, and that was an issue back 
then then when finding the high levels of benzene and hand sanitizers that was another issue however they're still saying to use sunscreen be especially coming into the summer months so again you know i'm not here to tell you whether you should use it or not um i'm just here to give you you know what's going on right now neutrogena has claims that you know which is owned by johnson and johnson that there is no you know traces of benzene in their products um let's see the other ones i'm going to talk about some of the examples that valashore actually um found these traces in I just have my ipad here this is the neutrogena ultra sheer weightless sunscreen spray uh spf 100 and the ultra sheer weightless sunscreen spray spf 70 were among were among the 14 products that had high levels of benzene um the Neutrogena Ultra Sheer Dry Touch Sunscreen, uh, SPF 30, and Oil-Free Facial Moisturizer with SPF 15 were found to contain the, the carcinogen. So these are among some of those um, companies that had these issues. Now, I wanted to mention to you all that some of these sunscreens and i'm going to i'm going to read this to you all okay cvs health and fruit of the earth and neutrogena and sun bum they had 14 sun care product lots with some of the highest contamination of benzene okay now you can find this petition from valashore online that lists those that did have the benzene contamination versus those that didn't because still we're coming into the summer months and we still need to protect ourselves if we're going to be exposed to the sun so hopefully this all was beneficial to you all if you have questions leave it down below um i hope you all found value in this and again this is the reason why the true skincare series didn't happen on wednesday but it ended up happening today because i needed to really find out what was going on and this is still ongoing okay this is not conclusive entirely yet this is just a new discovery of these high levels of benzene and they're still rolling out you know what could potentially have happened um is this a true claim uh so i'm sure johnson and johnson will have to do their backpedaling like i told you we ought to do when um for that you know um recreational company that i worked for they're gonna have to do their backpedaling cvs uh fruit of the earth sun bum they're all gonna have to do their backpedaling working with suppliers manufacturers seeing what happened um getting the proper data if they didn't already to really see how can this happen and again where we're sometimes when you cut corners and you go the cheap route can result in you know that solvent being in the end product so i just want to give context to that the the ongoing question is then what else could possibly have benzene in it when we talk about cosmetics now so that's the next question that is being raised um but valashore is consistently going to be testing more personal care products that kind of thing to ensure that the community is safe so again a huge shout out to Valashore for doing their due diligence. So from a scientific perspective, I applaud like chemists, microbiologists, scientists. I, I, I won't lie to you, friends. It sounds great, the labeling of the name, but truly scientists go through a lot, a lot of red tape, a lot of deadlines. It's a lot under the surface that you all don't really know about that we endure um, or we had to endure. And yeah, I'm gonna leave that there. But hopefully this was content that was helpful to you all. And um, this is not to scare you in any way, but just to give you information that brings about awareness. The discussion continues. I look forward to talking with you all in the comment section below. Have a good one.